the next point in uh, refining the root locus comes at the J-omega axis crossing. So the J-omega axis crossing is something that we already dealt with when we're looking at the root locus, sorry, the root Howard's criterion. But let's have a look at it once more. Now, the J-omega axis crossing is important because when a root locus touches the J-omega axis crossing or when poles touch the J-omega axis crossing, we know from the root locus as well as from the root Howard's criterion that that is the point where it has reached its maximum stability. The minute it goes from the J omega axis to the right hand plane, the system becomes unstable. So this is the point where it's gained its maximum stability. So that is why the J omega axis crossing is very important. So rightfully, we are going to use the root Thales criterion to calculate the J omega axis crossing. So for this purposes, we are taking the closed loop transfer function of a system. It's again taken from the previous problem, but uh, here is the closed loop transfer function. So, based on this closed loop transfer function, if we have to find the J omega axis crossing, we use the denominator of the closed loop. So, we use the denominator of the closed loop transfer function P of S or in some instances you can be just given the denominator in that case it becomes the characteristic equation. So based on this characteristic equation we create the uh, the root the root Howard's criterion. So in this case it will be S raised to 4, S cubed, S squared, S raised to 1 and S raised to 0 and then Let's draw the lines. And uh, let's try and populate the, the root table. So we'll see that we get 1, because it's an even polynomial that we start with, 14, and then we get 3k and then over here you have 7 which is the odd 8 plus k and then you have nothing on this side so you leave it blank. Now from the textbook you can see that upon calculations they are able to uh, figure it out in this manner so they are going to get it as 90 minus k Ninety minus k, and over here you get twenty-one k. And in this section, you will get it as I'm just going to write it uh, clearly here. It's going to be uh, k squared plus sixty-five k minus seven twenty divided by ninety minus k, and then there is nothing on these two blocks. In the last block you get it as 21k. So just to give you an idea, let's actually try and see if we can copy this one onto the screen to make it a bit more clearer. This is something that we've done already in our root locus, sorry, root Howard. So you can actually try and do it once more and you will be able to get the right answers, I'm sure. So this is what we get. Right Now, this is where the trick starts. So up until this point, it's something that we've learned. We also looked at it in the root locus when we were finishing up with the, 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 the root the root Howitz, and my apologies. But now what we do here is we need to find a row of zeros. So we need to find a row of zeros. I'm going to call it ROZ. Now the rule here is that the row of zeros should have a positive value of k. k cannot be zero nor can it be negative. So the row of zeros that we find should be one where uh, the value of k should be greater than zero. So let's try. We cannot have a row of zeros for S4 because 1 and 14 are non-zero terms, so that's out of the window. 
Same is the case for the S cube row because 7 is a non-zero term. When you come to the S squared row, there is a possibility because you can you have k in both terms. So first case, 21k for it to be 0, k needs to be 0. And 90 minus k for it to be 0, k should be uh, equal to 90, right? So with the first term it is okay, but with the second term k needs to be zero, which is not agreeing with the condition that we have. So the next equation that we have is this one, k minus k squared plus 65k plus 720 divided by 90 minus k. So if you uh, multiply throughout with a negative sign, you get it as k squared plus 65k minus 720, the whole divided by 90 minus k, and if that is equal to 0, you get an equation k squared plus 65k minus 720 is equal to 0. Now, if you find the roots of this equation, you should get two values of k. They have done that uh, for us here, and they have found that there are two values we are only going to consider the positive value of k, which makes it to be 0. So the positive value of k, which makes this equation to be 0, is k is equal to 9.65. So with this positive value of k, this s raised to 1 row will be a row of zeros. And when you have a row of zeros, what do we do in uh, the Ruth Lawrence criterion? we take the row just above the row of zeros to solve the equation. So that's what we usually do. So we'll see if you substitute the value of k in the s squared row, which is the row above the row of zeros, you will get it as 90 minus 9.65 s squared plus 21 into 9.65 is equal to 0. So you will get this as 90 minus 9.65. So if you do the, the mathematics there, you will see that it becomes 80,35 s squared plus 202.7 is equal to 0. And then if you find the value of s, that is, if you substitute this one, you will get it as minus 202.7 divided by 80.35 is equal to s squared. And if you take the square root of this one, you will get it as plus or minus 1.59j. So what that tells us is that it's two points that is given here. The first one is that this is the point where the root locus touches the j omega axis. So this is your j omega axis crossing, the most important one, the j omega axis crossing. And secondly, it gives us the range of stability. So this value of k that we have here, that is the range of stability of the system. That means that this system is stable from 0 less than or equal to k to less than or equal to 9.65. So any value greater than 9.65 will result in this specific system being unstable. So this is called the range of stability of the system. So this is the range of stability. So this is two points that we can calculate with this j omega axis crossing. So this is the third of the refining of the sketches. We did the, uh, uh, sorry, the second one. We did the uh, breakaway and the break-in point, And we now did the imaginary axis crossing. And we started, uh, we also did the asymptotical approach, which was the, the very first one that we discussed. Okay, so this is how we do the J omega axis crossing.